Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new video. Today we're doing the ATV recap of the Austin Studio, which is quite interesting. They have been working quite hard on a lot of facets which are uh, going into the game right now. First of all, we will talk about design team, we will also talk about the new Cutlass Black, which is actually coming in 3.0. And we will also talk about a little bit of the modeler building sets, which we have talked about before. But uh, they had quite some new stuff to show off as well. And I think it is pretty interesting to see how the universe is being expanded with those buildings. And uh, which we can explore and which we will, will, will be able to use as well. First of all, they are focusing on new subscriber flare. It's called the Vivid Display, which can display game locations holographically and find more information about said location. There's also other items like ship schematics, schematics which you can see right now, and uh, that's pretty cool, uh, I think. They're also revising the standoff, uh, Stantum system map. It will give more. Uh, they will give more details later. The landing zone AI and usables are undergoing further development. Updating the shop related elements and the system itself. The update will change how players could only purchase an outfit uh, as the entire set of the item instead of purchasing items individually or bundled for a discounted price. Also, as you can see right now, uh, they're getting a new system in for the mannequins. So they are really easily editable for the, for the game designers. First it was a little bit clumsy, but now they're really getting the system in place to really dress up mannequins very easily and um, create the shops like Kasaba Outlet in a very easy way. Also on the Persistent Universe, they finished up the mocap shoot using the House Opti Track system to help fill the gaps from the performance shoots down at the Imaginarium studio. They captured transition animations for female and male characters such as sitting down at tables with trays, getting chill, eating, drinking, etc, etc. These transition animations are important because they are used for usables, which are the object players or NPCs can interact with the environment from doors to cups to switches or maybe even a table, whatever. All this, maybe a vending machine, maybe a Big Benny's, who knows? So uh, that's pretty cool as well. Um, currently they are working with the Frankfurt uh, studio in the UK or with the Frankfurt and the UK studios to allow NPCs to work with multiple usables and interact with them all at the same time such as grabbing food from the show, show line using a tray to put other usables on it and then walking to the table sitting down with the usables and after they're done throwing away the usables and putting the tray back so you can see, really see right now there's a lot of animations uh, which has to be in the game and I think it's really important that it's going to be great and very smooth. And as far as I can see the animations right now, I must say they're really top notch. They're really, um, really very good. And I like that because the animation in the game has to be very top notch. Even if your ship is getting an impact by a missile or anything, it's really important. And at least for me, that the ship will... Uh, react to it but also the people on the ship will create react on it so for example if you're running and the ship gets an impact and you're really off the foot or you're even falling over because there's so much force on it also the ship animation team has been pretty busy they have uh, finished major animation tests for the cutlass black they implemented a new cockpit template called the stick template which positions the player in a post like that of a helicopter i can see that being used for the redeemer as well also, the DevOps team has uh, been adding additional logging that was added to the game to better track issues and uh, get it down to the player experience and download the status of user sessions at the moment the issue is experienced. Also, they debugged further issues with the launcher itself and fixed the music bug in Windows 10 that was ca being caused because Windows 10 actually has a 192 kilohertz rating for the sound and that was not really being nice with the launcher so they actually fixed it now and now we actually got music back in the launcher which is quite cool so now we are getting in the favorite part of this around the verse at least for me as a cutlass black owner uh, the cutlass new cutlass black looks really magnificent really nice if you would like to see what the other the first cutlass looks like you can actually press the right button on the right uh, top right here and uh, you can see the old cutlass 
but let's focus on the new one as well. Uh, the new one is just a little bit bigger, but it looks way more bunky, way more comfortable to actually fly in and not so squishy as the old Cutlass was, because in my opinion, that was really a joke. So here you can see it, the old one and the new one as well. Uh, the new one just looks a lot sturdier, a lot better armored. And uh, I can't wait to try this thing. It will come out in 3.0, where we don't really know um, what that will hold, of course, because uh, that's going to be a little bit when does 3.0 come. I'm, I'm personally expected it to be in August, uh, because then there is uh, CitizenCon as well in Frankfurt. And as you can see, there's a new cockpit and there's a new system uh, in place. So you don't really have to have those tight corners anymore when you try to step in. And I must say, it looks really good, really detailed. And I'm very happy uh, as a Cutlass owner to see this improvement. And as you can see, uh, in the inside, there's a lot of schematics from the, the Caterpillar as well. And when the ship actually releases, I will do a, a video about it as well, because it looks amazing. And here we got the new cockpit as well. Um, cockpit looks a lot better. I, I mean, just watch the other video from the first uh, from the first Cutlass, or the earlier iteration, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, well, you can, just, you can just say that this looks a lot more sophisticated, a lot better, and, uh, well... I just can't wait to fly this ship. I hope it's not... Uh, at least it, it's not going to be that squishy as the Cutlass anymore. And here is the front shot right here. And uh, well, I hope you guys will enjoy this ship as much as I will do. So here we have the new buildings which will be integrated in Star Citizen as well. Hopefully 3.0. I, I do expect it will come with 3.0. And it will mostly be focused on the m smallest building which we will encounter. And that's basically the station right here. Uh, we can't get much smaller, I guess. But uh, it looks very good so far. As you can see in the artwork right here. Uh, it's a little bit of uh, grey boxing as well. And there's a lot of to talk about. There was also a lot of talk about it in the past. And here we see the mining module. So it seems like those buildings are really getting a function. So the team with the concepts uh, started with the concepts and started with some mood shots which were validated before going into full production. The visual style and elements needed to support a modular format and enable design teams to create some interesting layouts which still felt unique. Once the concept was signed off, uh, it was broken down into constituent parts to start off with the high-tech service outpost in the building set, which we're looking at right now. So we will also get low-tech and maybe mid-tech as well, and maybe some other variations. So here you see, this really astounded me, astounded me how fast they built this building out and uh, how easy it seems to go. I mean... If we get the mod tools for Star Citizen, I can imagine it will be very easy to just create such a building and uh, have fun with it. And the tools which they are building here, just like a single click, boom, and you got your unique building. And you can even change all those upper things right here very easily to create very unique buildings, which are quite interesting. So they made a white box using the standard template set and modified it and added an add-on pieces like we just saw and like you're seeing right now. Uh, so the, the, the lower floor or at least the building, that's just a basic building set. But then with all those things on top to where they really make it unique. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, the gray box had to be in line with the art style but remains as a molder as the white box. The gray box is often more detailed than the production version. Some of the details are baked down into the textures. As you can see right now, they have uh, lots of different Mulder sets which they can use. And they all seem very detailed. And the more you add to this, the more uh, varieties you can make. Which is important because you don't want to have a repetition in this kind of building sets. And here you really see those details on the textures. There's lots to go from here. We also see the fonts right here, A, B, C, D, A, F, etc., etc., and some more shapes and styles. And that's pretty good and pretty nice. 
and we haven't been into color uh, just yet but if you think those buildings are all pretty much the same color but if you will change it even with more colors like red or green or whatever you can even make more variations here we got some impression shots as well and i must say it looks really nice i think they can they have endless opportunities to actually make a very unique building all the time and um, i also think that in some way they will actually be procedurally generated they have actually been talking about wanting to procedurally generate cities but uh, also these buildings will be able to be procedurally generated so there is no um, developer needed to actually put all those little buildings down so here we get in more variety as well so for example if the building is in a sand environment it will have those dusty sand particles on the surface of it and that's also if it's on a on a on let's say a, like a planet like hot like in star wars which is not hot but it's really cold actually like you're seeing right now then the textures will of course be frozen or it will be a little bit icy so that's really important to actually make the buildings very realistic and really responding to, to the environment they also encountered some bugs in the around the first for example you see this building clipping through the environment so they had to get to a solution for that okay so how do we solve the problem well they solved it by putting those support elements on the bottom of the building so the building will be way more versatile and can be placed on any surface they like uh, and not clipping through the environment anymore because clipping through an environment is very very unrealistic and actually immersion breaking in my opinion so really important also when they're working with the stairs like this they were getting a problem that the stairs was or at least the ramp was actually too long and uh, you can't have such a long ramp so they tried to actually um, get around the problem like you can see right now like uh, doing two ramps but that was still a little bit uh, too much so they actually went with the stairs I'm not sure how they why they didn't think about it in the first case I mean uh, for me it sounds pretty obvious but obviously there were some design choices which they had to make but I think the stairs is pretty much uh, spot on and I'm happy they went for that also in the future they will uh, work with new lay layouts and new materials and new add-ons as well so they actually can extend this variety between the buildings as much as they can the module modules link together to allow for generation of outposts and the goal is to create multiple variations and perceived variations planetary materials the weather system and aging are examples of variables being used right now and one hurdle they're really uh, getting into is getting the planetary editor to work with the outpost but to also place them in the right spot that's actually it actually works with the planetary editor right now but it doesn't really seem to place the buildings in the right spot just yet also the interiors and the exteriors change and have a different variations from one to another so that's pretty cool stuff right there also before i forget there was also a turbulent update um, turbulent has been working on spectrum version 0.32 and they launched with a performance update to show how messages and threads are rendered in the client. Also allowed the ability to reorder communities at the top left sidebar. The channel thread list now allows you to see the thumbnail images and the video previews. And version 0.33 is being worked on to include nested threads, uh, nested threads which allow players to choose between chronological types or nested types which are similar to reddit in that replies are contained in an area based on who they reply to also they have been working on bug fixes and optimization uh, which didn't make it into uh, version 0 0.32 uh, for, uh, which also contains bugs for androids and uh, they hope to roll it out in version 0.33 in the coming months, they've added above futures and more. They will begin to archive and shut down the process of the old forums. They won't be importing the old forums anymore, but they will keep the forming in an archive mode and uh, then probably fully delete it. But they will 
put a notice on the official forums right now when that will happen. The new launcher is being built with Electron Shell and has been going very well. And the Delta Patcher technology is now being used internally to some extent. And uh, they hope to have it out for the community in the coming months ahead, which seems pretty long. Also, they uh, have been planning for the Spectrum to actually get weekly releases, which uh, is happening right now. And if you'd like to know more about Spectrum, for example, what they are doing in the short term, the mid term and the long term, you can click on the upper right corner right here as you actually get a video. And uh, which the midterm and the long term and the short term are actually explained in more detail. Also, they are working on another project uh, to redesign the Robert Space Industries website to uh, make it more accessible to new players, but also better for older players. And this project has only just started, so there isn't much to see yet. Also, they are working on the ship stats page, which some people are quite happy about. And certain ships aren't being properly reflected in the stats just yet, and they are being updated to reflect that. The ship stats page is supposed to display what the design uh, slash intent is of the ship, and is not, of course, the exact uh, sta uh, stats, because there is so much room for interpretation right here, and sometimes things have to switch, or maybe something is too overpowered or too underpowered, and they have to change to change some stuff, or maybe in the design process they see, oh, it's not capable for three players, but maybe for two players. So there's lots of uh, things which can happen in the design process as well. And lastly, they are uh, announcing that they are reworking the referral re rewards. So now the referral rewards, you go up to 42 uh, referrals and then you just don't get gifts anymore. But uh, they're reworking it next week. They actually will announce it next week. So I'm not sure what we're getting. They haven't said anything about it, but uh, it's probably going to be pretty interesting if you'll have those referrals already then uh, it's probably going to be nice with a nice new gift. And if you don't have the referrals yet, then there's probably more incentive to actually get them in the new update. So yeah, that was pretty much uh, this around the verse of uh, this week. So I'll thank you all for watching. And if you'd like to see more, you can like me on Facebook. You can follow me on Twitter or maybe Google+, Plus, whatever you are using. And also, if you want to see more, you can click on the left right here, which will show you the latest around the verse. And you can click on the right right here uh, to see my Buccaneer video as soon as it comes out. So I thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.